Hello and welcome to this edition of Back in History. In this edition, we bring to you the story of the day Abacha died. Abacha was a general in the Nigerian army. Abacha had seen several stages of Nigeria's history and development and is even said to have participated actively in all the military coups in Nigeria except one, the Major Chuku Makaduna Nzeogu School of January 1966. Every other coup in Nigeria had a bacha in active participation. At some point in the history of Nigeria, a bacha was a kingmaker. He was a very patient military officer who was not in a hurry to make himself president, but he had his eyes on the presidency. And when the time became ripe for him in 1993, he toppled interim president Anna Shenekon and announced himself as the military head of state of Nigeria. He went on to rule Nigeria till June 1998 when he died in office. His death gave rise to many theories. A certain theory said that he was poisoned to death by Indian women of easy virtue who are said to have been imported into the Asurok Villa for Abacha's pleasure. There is also the theory that said that he was killed by a close friend of his. There is another theory that said that he was killed by operatives that came to Nigeria a day before in the entourage of Yesa Arafat. There is also the theory that said that he died of cardiac arrest. Another theory said he died of natural causes. Whatever the truth may be, what is indisputable is the fact that General Sane Abacha died in the wee hours of 9th June 1998. This marked the end of the life and time of Nigeria's most dreaded and most feared military head of state. Perhaps the version of the story as told by Major Al Mustafa, Abacha's chief security officer, might be the most reliable version of the story of Abacha's death. In an interview granted to Chukso Kocha of the This Day newspaper with the title How Abacha Died, Al Mustafa's version is unquote as follows. The sudden collapse of the health system of Abacha started on June 7, 1998 at the Abuja International Airport. Immediately after one of the security personnel who accompanied Yasser Arafat of Palestine shook hands with him, unquote. Al Mustafa added, shortly after the handshake, I noticed the change in the countenance of Abacha and I immediately informed the ADC Lieutenant Colonel Abdullah who advised that we keep a close watch on him. Later in the evening, his doctor came around and administered injection on him. He was then advised to have a short rest, unquote. He started further. I left the villa and went back home to rest. At about 5 a.m., the security guards ran to my quarters to inform me that Abacha was very unstable. I ran to the guest house of the head of state. When I got to his bedside, he was already gasping for breath. I immediately called Abacha's personal physician, Dr. Wali, who arrived at the villa in eight minutes and gave Oga two doses of injection, one at the heart and another on the neck. This did not work. The head of state at this time had turned very cold. The doctor then told me that the head of state was dead. Unquote. Al Mustafa added further, The story that my boss died on women is not true. It is a great lie. The story that my boss ate poisoned apple is also not true. Unquote. Telephone calls were then made to several VIPs in the military at the time, including the army chiefs and former military heads of state, on what should be the next line of action for the country. An emergency meeting was convened at daybreak and deliberations were made 
on who becomes the next head of state and to discuss the modalities for the burial of Abacha. In the end, General Abdul Salami Abubakar was selected as a new head of state of Nigeria. Oji Obonaya Oji, Radio Nigeria State House correspondent at the time, has stated in his book, Inside Asoro, that what followed was the conveyance of Abacha's body to Abacha's hometown of Kano for burial in the evening hours. Oji noted at page 145 of the book, and I quote, We had already boarded the aircraft and almost getting set to take off. When General Abdul Salami Abubakar curiously asked, Where is the corpse? He was told that the corpse was in the hold. No, no, no. Bring it inside, the general commanded. The corpse, which was not in a casket, was brought inside the plane and kept few seats away from where I sat. As the journey progressed, whenever there was turbulence, the body would shake, exposing the legs, which were partially covered. I sat in the aircraft speechless. My reflections were on life, death, power, influence, and the vanity of human desires. End of quote. The presidential jet touched down in Kano, and the remains of the head of state was conveyed in a motorcade to the Kano Central Mosque and then to his family compound, and the body was laid in the Abacha family mosque and then committed to Mother Earth in accordance with Islamic rites. The burial ended at about 10.05 p.m. His death and burial brought to an end an era in the post-colonial history of Nigeria. For some, Abacha was a good man. For others, he was a brutal dictator. Abacha was survived by a wife, Mariam, and eight children. Thanks for watching this episode of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel and share the video with friends and loved ones. <laughs>